Welcome to this extraordinary council meeting. Apologies for absence. Sorry, Chair. Um, sorry, Chair. Um, I have apologies from Councillor Ashton, Councillor Allen, and Councillor Leedham. Are there any more from the floor? Thank you. Moving on to agenda two, items two, declarations of interest. Have any members got any interest to declare at this meeting? Yeah, just a personal interest, uh, not a pecuniary or financial one, based on the fact that uh, it is proposed that I be appointed to the board of the Mayoral Development Corporation. There's no business required by statute to be done before any other business. Item four, the request for extraordinary council is as set out on the agenda. Councillor Councillor Brush has proposed of the re requisition to outline the proposal. Thank you, Chair. I'm very grateful uh, to you for calling this extraordinary council meeting. I know that many of these exchanges in this chamber have not always been particularly edifying. And I know they haven't necessarily always been conducted in the spirit of unity. And I take my own share of the responsibility for that. I know members opposite will probably consider me on occasion to be, I don't know, what's the word? Brash, probably is the word, uh, if, 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 we, if we get down to it. But this is not a usual political issue. It's not about the decisions of the day. It's actually the decisions of the future, a generational issue. It cuts across party and politics. It's not red versus blue. It's not Labour versus Tory. It's not about winning votes. Indeed, so shocking has the consultation been, I'm surprised many people in Hartlepool know anything about it, quite frankly. But this is, first and foremost, about our duty to our town. And I tell you, members, that colleagues on this side, and I know for a fact colleagues on that side, are genuinely concerned about this proposal in its current form. They see it as an existential threat to our town's future. As we stand here today, we are wrestling with some of the problems the last time Hartlepool went down this route. Now, nobody here was sat in this council chamber when the last development corporation was in place, but I can tell you now, I was stood on the marina talking to a guy who lives next to land banked land owned by a private developer who got it from the last corporation. We are dealing with those problems today. We have a responsibility to ensure that the mistakes that were made by decision makers of the past are not made again. And I would put on record, and I mean this extremely sincerely, that when the leader of the council consented to the initial proposal back in July. I think he did it with absolute sincerity and an absolute belief that he thought this was a positive move for Hartlepool. And I believe it still can be. <coughs> and there's no party politics for me in this at all. I know too that the leader of the council shares some of the concerns that we've expressed tonight. Indeed, the council has put forward some of the proposals already that we've put forward and had them rebuffed by the Tees Valley Combined Authority. But let's be clear, the Tees Valley Mayor is on record as saying that this cannot go ahead without the consent of this body. And I say to members that our consent must only be given if we are satisfied that there are sufficient safeguards in place. Stockton refused, and so should we if we are not satisfied. It's not about us. We are the very definition, as the famous Robin Day once said, we are here today, gone tomorrow politicians. It's not for us that we do this. But I'd remind members opposite, the Tees Valley Mayor is one of those here today, gone tomorrow politicians. And in the future, it may be a Labour Mayor or an Independent Mayor or some other form of Mayor that has all the power that this MDC confers on that person at this moment in time. 
Our job is to set red lines that safeguard and ensure that regardless who sits in these seats and regardless who sits in the mayor's office in Middlesbrough, that the Hartlepool's priorities are protected. And so, to the specifics of our proposal here tonight, and members will know that we took this to committee on Monday, it was emailed to all members ahead of time, we didn't want to drop these ideas on you tonight, we wanted everyone to be able to have their own conversations in their own way. So to be absolutely clear, we're asking for the following proposals to be written into the MDC's constitution. The MDC and the Tees Valley Combined Authority are absolutely free to refuse every single one of these proposals if we pass them tonight. They are absolutely free to refuse them, but then we are free to withdraw our consent for the MDC. And just to be clear, I've checked with the Chief Solicitor and she's very happy for me to say tonight, these proposals are both legal and lawful. We are well within our rights to make this request of the MDC and the Tees Valley Combined Authority, and should they refuse, we are within our rights to withdraw our consent. So, to the proposals on the table. The first proposal around the protection of public assets. We've said that no public asset should be transferred to the MDC without the agreement of this body. Now, to be clear, we are not seeking ownership of anything owned by the Homes and Communities Agency or anything, that, or anything else. But what we want, and what this proposal asks us to do, is for the MDC to work in partnership with us, as someone who has, as an organisation that has strategic responsibility for Hartlepool. We are asking for a sunset clause of three years, at which point public assets return to the public and we don't fall into the trap of previous times when private developers swallowed up the assets. We are asking that planning powers not be transferred outside the democratic control of this organisation and the people that are elected. We're asking that the board be extended to include the deputy leader of the council, currently a Conservative member, the leader of the largest opposition party, currently a Labour member, to expand the democratic accountability of that board. We're asking that they don't make future changes to boundaries they don't try to expand the MDC without first our agreement. And that crucially, oversight of how that large amount of funding is spent, 10 million pounds, and we welcome that, goodness, is properly open, accountable, and transparent through the Audit and Governance Committee chaired by an independent. These proposals are sensible, rational, they put Hartlepool first. And I say to members opposite, there is not a single member of the Labour group here tonight who is going to vote for these proposals because they've been told to. They are going to vote for these proposals tonight because they believe them to be correct. And I would say, if you think these proposals are right, if you have doubts, if you are unsure about what the MDC means for our town and the possibility that it may have negative implications, then err on the side of caution, support our proposals, safeguard our town. Thank you, Chair. You have three, min three minutes each to debate. That is, if you want to. Uh, Councillor Cook. Remain seated, Chair. Yes, okay. certainly can. Um, first and foremost, um, I'm all for bringing money into Hartlepool. I'm not interested in Middlesbrough, Stockton, Darlington or anything. I'm interested in Hartlepool and what is best for Hartlepool. This documentation that I got uh, after the FNP on Monday, I've, re I've tried to read as much as I can of it today, and the Constitution and what have you. And I'm not joking, Mr. Chairman. I'm inundated with thoughts of why this, why that, why not this, why not that. In fact, you can see by the paperwork, I've marked them all off. And there's that many questions to ask. I can't honestly see how we, as a body here, representing the people of Hartlepool, can say it with our hands on our hearts, yes, we can vote for it, no, we can't vote for it, whatever, because we don't have enough information. It's as simple as that. 
We never have had enough information. We're having this meeting now to discuss things that, whether or not the questions that I've got here, I don't even know whether our managing director can answer them or not. Let's say she can, so what happens then? Where do they go? Where do the questions go to? Who do, do we depend on to get those questions answered? All sorts of questions are, all sorts of questions I've got here that I know for a fact I can't ask here tonight because nobody will know the answers. And I find that very, very frustrating that we're sitting here actually going to discuss an issue that, in my opinion, should not have been brought, no disrespect to any of you, should not have been brought today because we haven't got that information. I will not make a decision that will not benefit this town 100%. I will say that now, I will not vote for something that doesn't benefit this town. I'm not here and I wasn't elected by the members of the Heart Ward to sit here and give away whatever the, they want to be given away without knowing fully all the ins and outs and reasons why this and why that. And I'll just make one final thing. Even the first thing that I looked at was the board. The board has already been decided by Tees Valley. Not by us, and that we're talking about this is Hartlepool. We're not talking about Tees Valley, we're talking about Hartlepool. And we're talking about Hartlepool areas. As far as I'm concerned, I don't know, people have already got this document, as we've got the mayor, uh, we've got our leader, we've got uh, a lady from Learning Curve Group, a lady from Strasbourg, guy from Orange Box Training Solutions, a lady from HMB accountants, whoever they are, and Steve Turner, a police and crime commissioner. Well, that is something, for, in my opinion, that we have had no input into. Why not? What gives... I've got to be very careful what I say. What gives the mayor, Ben Houchen, the right to decide on who is going to be on this board without any consultation whatsoever with any of us. And I'm independent. I don't care what Conservatives say or what Labour say. That's, that's me. And honestly, Mr Mayor, I find it very difficult to sit here and to try and make a conscious decision on something that is a, a total mishmash of unanswered questions. Thank you. Councillor Harrison. Thanks, Chair. I'm afraid, Rob, you're not here to make that decision because that decision has already been made. And that is why we've had this extraordinary council meeting to discuss the fact that, in my opinion, the process, the whole process has been flawed, um, as was the consultation. And I, and I think that we're at the point where, in order to safeguard what we already have in Hartlepool and to make sure that they don't ride roughshod over us any more than they already have. Um, this is why we've suggested that these things be put in place, the safeguards be put in place to protect um, the people of Hartlepool and the town itself. So it, it isn't to do with um, getting one-upmanship. It's actually to do with looking after our town because we haven't had any say in it, you're quite right. I think that's wrong. So I think the process um, of these MDCs is wrong. Um, the Secretary of State can make this, this decision any time. Um, so it's, it's not anybody here who has made um, that kind of process. It's already set in place. And I think that in order to safeguard us, we need to vote, because the vote tonight is on whether we take these safeguards um, forward. And if we, if we don't, or if, if they don't accept it, then we as a council will say we will, we will not go ahead with this. Because only one person has, was allowed to say anything. And, and I agree with what Jonathan said. I think Shane made that decision back in the summer <laughs> with all the good intentions that he had. But I do think it's very flawed 
and I do think that we need to stand up for ourselves here, otherwise we'll get completely sucked in. Councillor Hargreaves, did you have your hand up? No, no. Oh, sorry. Yeah. sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Councillor Brown. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Councillor Brash, I guess this is for you. In, in your opening statement, you, you, and I haven't got your word for word here because you said quite a bit, but you alluded to the fact that we request these and, and if they don't want them, then we have every right not to sign up to it. If we... Uh, that, uh, it's only part of it. So, sorry, Jonathan. If, if we request these and they don't agree to it or they don't agree to all of it, we then, as a council, still have every right to sign up to it as well as not sign up to it. Can, I think, and this sort of feeds into both the speakers, all three of the speakers, should I say, so far. Um, the issue we have at the moment is that this is on the Secretary of State's desk <coughs> right now. I think our Managing Director has been on record a couple of times saying they're quite busy at the moment, um, Mr Gove, but it's on his desk. This can be enacted any day. Mayor Houchin has said he expects it to be enacted by Christmas. That's why we called the meeting tonight, because Christmas, as we all know, is fast approaching. If the, they reject, and actually, do you know what I'd honestly expect? from the Tees Valley Combined Authority, if we agree these proposals tonight, I'd expect them to come back and say, well, let's have a chat, because we're okay with this and we're not okay with that, and that's a mature way of going about it. That's what I would expect them to do. But if ultimately we're not satisfied, we're in a very short period of time where we say to the Secretary of State, hey, Mr. Gove, we're not happy as a council with this. And even then, the Secretary of State may go, I'm still saying yes, okay? We only have Mayor Houchin's word that he doesn't think he can go ahead without the support of us. Legally, it can happen whatever we do or not. What we're saying tonight is, let's put down some red lines to say this is what, as a council, we expect and demand. And that's as much as we can do in this situation. Thank you, Chair. Well, that helped with clarity. Can, Mr. Chairman, before, can I ask a point, a legal point? On <laughs> On, on the um, Hartlepool Labour um, statement, it states under protection of public assets, number two, that the sunset clause be included. I won't read it out. You know, right. What I want to know is, is that legal, first of all? Yeah, it is legal that they can include a sunset can you clause. Explain to me what is meant in its entirety by a sunset clause, so, um, I can answer that, Chair. Um, so, a sunset clause means actually we would sit down with the Mayor and the Combined Authority in, we would agree, a time, so we could say in three years, five years, ten years, if you haven't achieved everything you want to achieve, we can actually sit down with them and say, right, we now think the board should, uh, the corporation should terminate and we would start that conversation. So that's what a sunset clause is. So it, what's been referred to tonight was the Teesside Development Corporation and when that terminated, um, there, was, there was a conversation around assets that were, I, th I believe, back in the day, public assets and then they've ended up in private ownership, which is why... Um, the request has come forward to make sure that we protect that. And I think that's something... I've, I've, I may come back on that, uh, Mr Chairman. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> the, the thing for me is, um, we're damned if we do and we're damned if we don't here, uh, whichever way we look at it. One of the things that I find very annoying is that we look at information that we are given by a person that we trust and supposedly trust, and that's the uh, Ben Houch and the uh, Mayor of Tees Valley, who represents Tees Valley and wants the best for Tees Valley. All right, we all want the best for Tees Valley, but first and foremost, we want the best for Hartlepool. That's what we want. So my question is, on the basis of the, purport, the second item that I've just mentioned from the Labour Group, and you said it is legal, if we, as a body, decide that we've, we, we, that's it, we, we don't want any more of this. We want everything bringing back into our remit, comes under our wing, etc., etc. Now, 
if we say that, what are we like legally? Michael Gove, whether he's here in three years' time or not, God only knows. I hope he isn't, but that's another point. Uh, will that person, whoever is in that position, roughshod, go over us again? You know, and just say, no, I've decided that it's going to stay. So it doesn't matter what you've already decided in your meeting and how you've decided it. I say it stays. That's what bothers me as well. Sorry. Councillor Brush. I mean, just on a point of clarity, again, and it's a great question, uh, Rob, what we're asking tonight is for the MDC to write into their constitution that they will adhere to these proposals. And if you'll notice from um, item five, that they won't change their constitution without consulting us. So that would be the safeguard, that they wouldn't be able to do it because their constitution would prevent them from riding roughshod over us. Can I just pick up on that point, Mr yeah. Chairman? When I read part of it, the Constitution, it says that the Chairman of the MBC and the uh, Leader of the Council can make, make decisions on altering their Constitution without going back to the committee. Which is, which is exactly why, on point five of our proposals, we've asked them to write into their Constitution that they wouldn't do that without firstly talking to us, which I think maintains the democratic accountability of this organisation. Councillor Harrison. Thanks, Chair. The other thing you brought up about the board, Rob, mm -hmm. um, I think it, you have a very good point. Nobody's had any say in who the board members are. Um, I asked at Finance and Policy why it's um, Steve Turner. He's Tees Valley, he's not Hartlepool, and I think the um, police constable, the chief constable from Cleveland is also on it as an associate member. Why not somebody from Hartlepool? Because he's not. So it, it's very Tees Valley based, um, it's very business based, and I know it's to do with business, but there isn't that kind of transparency and openness that there should be um, with a board. So I, I've already, you know, I agree with you on the board situation. Come to the Hargreaves. Seeing as you let me have a go before, I thought, well, it'd be rude not to take you up on the opportunity. Um, I mean, I think the reality of, of where we're at is that we cannot stop the creation of the Mayoral Development Corporation. It, it, it can happen whether we agree to these, um, you know, to put these forward as, as terms or not. If, if, they could, if the powers that be want it, they can do it. I think what this is about is this is about trying to level up, dare I say, the sort of the playing field. This is about us trying to give them some terms of reference and actually do it in partnership and actually say to them, look, if you as a body have no intention of doing any of these things, then you would have no problem signing up to it. Like if, you, if you have no intention of misusing public land or benefiting from it or giving it to your private sector friends, then this is not going to be controversial for the MDC. They would simply be able to sign up to it because they would be acting in the same spirit in, in which we have written these proposals. So all we're actually saying is, look, let us, as a local authority, have a few little safeguards so that we can ensure that we are doing our job as public servants and as protectors of the public purse and the public realm. Let us, let us have that comfort that you will work with us and that public land and public assets will be kept for the benefit of the residents of Hartlepool. That is all this is about. But they don't have to accept it and it can still go ahead. It's not, you know, we... we this is just about us setting a scene, if you like, and, 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 and I think it's about setting the direction of travel. We all want what's best for Hartlepool, and if it brings in additional resources into the town, then I'm all for it. I think let's do it and let's work together to deliver that. But we would never forgive ourselves if we do not do what we need to do to protect the public assets of this town. And, and that's, you know, that, that goes beyond any of us in our terms of office. Councillor Little. Thank you, Chair. Um, I know we've had seminars on this discussion, and I'll probably go back a little bit, so I'll just turn around and look at the family behind us, apart from Mr. Fred. How many businesses have tried to set up in Hartlepool? It's probably a question to you, Denise, sorry, and failed, 
And how can the MDC improve that? Because at the end of the day, we're going to have jobs for Hartlepool residents and our children in the coming years. It's a really hard question to answer. How many businesses have set up and failed? Not, um, not, not, not set up, but actually not set up. I, I, I don't know. But what I do know is when investors come to the Tees Valley, they will look at areas that actually are benefit from various um, incentives. And that is why the Tees Valley Mayor has proposed something for Hartlepool because he believes that will bring a, an incentive um, which will then equalise the balance across the Tees Valley. That's what the Mayor is proposing. Thank you, Chair. Just to answer a couple of the questions that have been raised, and I think there has been some valid points, but firstly, if, uh, if I um, answer the point from Councillor Little there, um, the purpose of the, the MDC really is to be very agile and to be able to um, react to the markets themselves and, and, and assist business creation and bring those incentives forward. Part of it, you'll see from the report from Finance and Policy, part of the benefits that it's able to do that is incentives in relation to business rate relief, grant, uh, the ability to give grants or business loans to new businesses coming to the area that wouldn't be there um, or would be additional to those that are already there and available. So it immediately puts Hartlepool one step ahead of some of our competitors in that respect. In relation to the makeup of the board, Councillor Cook, we have actually had some input into it, uh, and in fact, three of the uh, people who uh, sit on the board themselves, the independent people from the business community, are there as recommendations from Hartlepool Borough Council. They haven't been appointed by the Tees Valley Mayor. They're businesses that we, as a Borough Council, uh, work with on a basis, uh, and we feel that they would give it a really good uh, contribution to uh, the Mayoral Development Corporation. The whole issue around the um, constitution itself, we are still in negotiations with them. And, and to give some reassurance, Councillor Cook, we have taken and commissioned independent legal advice to make sure that the protections that we want and we need as a council are there and are fought for as part of the negotiation. But we, what we wouldn't want to do is to go in there with one arm behind our back. Councillor Hargreaves. Could I just ask for two quick um, clarifications, if I may? The first one is, is um, just clarification on the process by which we nominated those three representatives, because you, you mentioned that the council had done that, Shane, and I don't, I don't remember. I mean, I, I kind of think that we are the council. Um, so just a, a clarification on that. And then, um, if I may, to the Chief Solicitor, just a clarification just or, a, or an opinion, a legal opinion. Um, the... the, the um, uh, the safeguards that, that Councillor Moore mentioned in terms of um, the MDC, would you, in your opinion, say that they were as robust as the suggestions that we have put forward as part of this proposal? Um, or would you say, in your legal opinion, that these proposals actually present a greater level of um, protection for the people of Hartlepool? I think what um, you put in your proposals goes beyond what is currently suggested in the amendments. Um, but at the moment, the, the amendments that we proposed, we're still negotiating, so we don't even know whether those ones have been accepted yet. We're still working through with that. So there wouldn't really be any issue, there wouldn't really be any issue with us um, you know, putting these alongside those or amalgamating them at the time. And then just a clarification on the process that Quite simply, Chair, ultimately, we could have had no say in the appointment of the board members. The law itself says that it's down to the Chair to appoint them. However, in this instance, the Chair did approach both myself uh, and, and I've spoken with uh, council officers who deal with our business community uh, in, on, a, on a daily basis, and we put forward uh, myself and officers who deal with the business community put forward the suggestions. Councillor Creevy. Yeah, sorry, can I just ask a quick question about the, um, the appointees then um, that have been nominated by Councillor Moore? 
along with officers. Um, is there any financial benefit to them from these appointments? And also, um, who actually did make those decisions? Would you like me to answer that? Sure. So there's no financial incentives, as far as I've, I've read and every big conversation I've had. Um, and the decision is made by the Tees Valley Mayor. It is the Mayor who has the, the right to actually decide who he wants on his board. He doesn't have to consult with us, and it's in legislation. Councillor Munn. Chair, can I just propose that it go to the vote if there's no further discussion? Councillor Smith. Hiya. Um, on page 11 of the amendments document, um, it does state that the corporation agrees that six months prior to the end date, it shall commission an evaluation report from the reputable independent expert and whether the corporation has delivered its objectives and um, provide Hartlepool Borough Council no later than four months of the end date. But what end date are we talking about? And then on, on 44, it says the corporation shall write to each constituent council entitled to give them consent to whether to continue with the corporation after the end date, as set out on paragraph 5, no later than one month prior to the end date. If the consent is not given, um, and no, or no response has been uh, provided, the corporation shall be wound down with all its sites transferring to Hartlepool Borough Council at nil value within six months of the end date. Isn't that part of what we, we were already talking about? So, so they're, sorry, Chair. So, so they are the amendments we've asked to be made to the Constitution that our legal team and their legal team are still working through. So what end date? What end date? And that is what we need to determine. But that's why I suppose there's a debate here this evening. The, as Councillor Brash has said, the combined authority, the Tees Valley Met, don't have to accept any of these amendments. They are legally the power and the decisions are with them. So apologies for being a bit simple. These amendments are going in. Do you want me to stand up? Sorry. But, right, so these amendments are, are taking place at the moment. We've got a document. You've gone back to them and you've said, right, this is what we actually want. I agree with quite a few of them in there. And they come back and they go to you, no, actually, we don't want them. We're not having any of it. At what, if we tonight say we're not going to go with that decision, we're going to go with this decision, and then they decide in a couple of weeks' time that they're not going to accept any of the amendments that we've already proposed... What position does that then put us in? Are we actually a bit... Yeah. So I think that there are two things on the table this evening. One is the proposal from the Labour Party, which is asking for these safeguards to be added to the feedback we've put in the Constitution. The other is the report that went to Finance and Policy, which actually um, it sets out the recommendations there which is a diff they're two different things and we need to be careful we're not pulling them together and, and you know, trying to line them up because they're two different things. So I think the, the question for this, this part of the meeting is this, right. the Labour Party. We're not also agreeing. Councillor Jackson. Thank you, Chair. Um, just to, first of all, like a point of clarification, it's been said that we're at the point where of no return and this decision is on somebody's desk at the moment. Um, so whatever we decide tonight, is it correct that that's exactly where we are? It doesn't matter what we do. If they make a decision to go with this, we can't do anything about it. Is that correct? So um, the Mayor has written to the Secretary of State asking to set up the Mayoral Development Corporation for Hartlepool as an entity. Um, the work that officers are doing along with uh, the leader and the Tees Valley Mayor is making sure that we've got, if, if it goes ahead, we've got that, well, it will go ahead, but actually shaping and uh, putting the right safeguards and assurances in place that benefit Hartlepool residents. And that is something that the leader of the council has been um, dealing with and that I've been dealing with, which is set out in the FNP report. But I think there is still some questions 
to be answered in terms of the detail, which will come back to members. We've said in the, my reports for Finance and Policy Committee, there's still work to do, which will come back. What we're looking for this evening is um, the, the Labour Party's statement there, and then we'll move on to the Finance and Policy, which is talking about um, something that's slightly different. Chair, Chair. Yeah, I'm, sorry, Jonathan. And, and, and I, I'm not doubting what you were saying there, Jonathan. I just wanted clarification from up there. Um, I think we're all of the same opinion here, that we, we want to bring money into Hartlepool, but we all remember what happened with the last development corporation. Right? We've got roads that we can't adopt. We've got land, like has been mentioned already, that's been banked. I think that we do need these checks and balances in place. I'm just slightly, won't say disappointed, but I'd like to have seen the recommendations come from a wider group rather than just the Labour group. I'd like to have been involved in, is there something else that we needed to put in there? And I, I do think that we do need the checks and balances. We do need the money and the investment in Hartlepool. We need to get it right, but I don't want to be at the point where we can suggest something in addition to this. I mean, when, when are we going to get the deadline for that? Because I'd like to take a, a few days to read through all of this, digest everything, and maybe add something to what the Labour group have proposed tonight. Like I say, I'd, I'd, I'd have liked to have been involved in that. I'd have liked to have seen a wider audience involved in that. We tried to can I just, just for clarity for some members who haven't been involved in the members' seminar on the Finance and Policy Committee. So what you've got in front of you, and it's been a timing issue if we're, if we're, if we're totally honest. So the Labour Party called for the extraordinary meeting and produced this statement at the same time as the leader of the council asked me to bring forward a report that I was bringing to December to November's committee. So there's a timing issue there. Which um, So... What the Labour Party are proposing are um, safeguards and assurances to go into the constitution and to be presented to the Tees Valley Mayor. Yeah? The report that goes to finance and policy also says something similar in the recommendations. So I think it's a timing issue. I think if I'm, I know I'm, I'm not being political, I think everybody in the floor of council wants safeguards and assurances in place to protect our assets and powers for the benefit of Hartlepool. Councillor Brush. Chair, I think the um, members opposite have moved that the vote be put in, uh, and so on that basis I'll wind up, uh, as I'm constitutionally entitled to do. Um, look, it's very, very simple tonight. I don't actually think, I appreciate there are two things, but I don't think there has to be two things. What we are suggesting tonight is that we add, one of which is remarkably similar, but we add our safeguards to the negotiations that are going on. What we're doing tonight, and by the way, this, I have to say, perhaps this debate should have started in July when initial consent was given by the leader of the council, but it didn't, and so we're, we are where we are, and we have to move on. But what we are saying tonight is, let us give our officers the democratic weight of this chamber to say, look, this is what our members are demanding. And if you don't negotiate, if you don't come to the plate and say, actually, we understand your concerns about democratic accountability, we understand your concerns about public assets, and on that basis, we will put those protections in, then our officers and our leader get to say, if you don't do that, I'm instructed to object on behalf of this entire body. So now, no longer one leader and one managing director with her offices going to the Tees Valley Mayor. This council is negotiating. This council, the full weight, I would add, I'd ask for unanimity, unanimity on these proposals tonight. So they can say, look, this is what the democratic elected body of Hartlepool believes to be important, believes should be in your constitution, believes should be the safeguards that are put in place. And yes, Councillor Jackson, they are absolutely free to say no. And if they do say no, they will do so without the support of this chamber. And they can do whatever they like with that. 
They can decide to go, we don't care whether we've got the support of the council, we're doing it anyway, that's their right. But I would argue, and indeed Mayor Houchin has put on record, that he values and wants the support of this chamber. That's our in. That's the, that's the power we have tonight. Now, Councillor Jackson makes a point, what if there are other things? I would strongly encourage, absolutely, for further discussion beyond tonight about other things that might go into place. As I said, I would expect the Tees Valley Combined Authority to come here. And I, and I was mentioned by Councillor Little at Finance and Policy, it is disappointing that we haven't had the Tees Valley Combined Authority political leadership in front of us to talk to us about this decision. Not hide, no I think it is disappointing that's not happened. I would expect them to come back and say, right, we heard you, we took you seriously, we get that the body that is this council has some serious concerns and wants some safeguards in place, so here we are to talk about how we can make that happen in a partnership. It should never be the case that an unelected, unappointed body gets to tell democratically elected bodies what they can and cannot do with their town. But that's the system we've got. And we've got to stand up for ourselves. So I urge members tonight, pass this proposal, add it to the proposal that's been negotiated as we speak. Give our officers the weight and democratic, the democratic weight to go into the Tees Valley Combined Authority and say, this is what Hartlepool wants. And if we do that, then we might end up in a far better situation than we are at the moment. What could be the harm of trying? I move the motion. Can we go to the vote? Do we have a seconder? Can we please confirm what we are voting on for? Can we have, we have a seconder? seconder? And then we'll do that, this. Thank you. We had one. To be absolutely clear, um, Councillor Smith, we are proposing that these safeguards before you tonight are added to the safeguards being proposed in the <coughs> negotiation that's going on at the moment. And crucially, and this is very important, that the support of this council for the MDC is conditional on these proposals being adopted into the constitution. But we say very fairly and openly, if you want to come and talk to us about it, Mayor Houchin, please come. A legal standpoint, if I may, Chair, if that's, if that's allowable at this point. Is it? Yes? Yeah. Yes? No? Yes? We've had a... a, a Proposal no. It's been seconded, so it really should just go to the vote now. Thank you, Chair. Um, so, we are voting to include these in the negotiations that have already been um, commenced and are ongoing. Yeah. Councillor Boddy. No. Councillor Brash. No. Councillor Brown. Sorry it's taken a while. It's a difficult decision not knowing the full facts, but I'm extremely nervous that we could jeopardise a lot of money coming into town. Uh, I'm going against. Councillor Buchan? Yes. Councillor Cassidy? Yes. Councillor Clayton? Oh. Councillor Cook? Oh. Councillor Cowie? Against. Councillor Cranny? Against. Councillor Creevy? Councillor Falconer. Sorry. Against. Councillor Feeney. Councillor Fleming. Councillor Groves. Councillor Hall. Oh. Councillor Hargreaves. Oh. Councillor Harrison. Oh. Councillor Howson. Oh. Councillor Jackson. Oh. Councillor Lindridge. Councillor Little. Against. Councillor Lyons. Councillor Martin Wells. Councillor Morley. 
Councillor Moore. Against. Councillor David Nicholson. Against. Councillor Veronica Nicholson. Against. Councillor Reeve. Against. Councillor Smith. Against. Councillor Tiplady. Against. And Councillor Young. Sorry, I've been given a very old register. I do apologise, Councillor Sharp. Oh. And Thompson. <laughs> I do apologise, Councillors. Um, I've been given an old sheet. Um, Councillor Sharp. Oh. Councillor Thompson. That, uh, that motion has been uh, is lost and it's then fourteen four nineteen against. Can I ask that legal question now the vote's been taken. Right. A very hard decision. Sorry, very hard decision. But what we've got is we've got a recommendation from finance and policy, and I know there's members on all sides on finance and policy, and I'm not. And we've got the one from the Labour Group, which I've gone with. What was wrong with that going like that? I know. Do you know that we, we were arguing over nothing, really, aren't we? <laughs> Through the chair, please. Can we stay? Are we going home now? Sure. Thanks, Chair. Um, <coughs> I think it goes without question. We do want the Mayoral Development Corporation to be a success because we want Hartlepool as a borough to be successful and we don't want to uh, set the MDC up to fail. Uh, I would therefore move the recommendations that went to finance and policy and are before members today with the additional recommendation uh, on the bottom of that uh, that reinforces the safeguard we've already got uh, in the, the draft constitution uh, around the safeguards for uh, publicly owned assets reverting back to council ownership um, once the Mayoral Development Corporation ceases to exist. Second that. Can I ask a question, Chair, please? Thank you very much. Oh, I do apologise, Councillor Body. Councillor Body. Um, a question, and I don't know who's best place to answer it. We have just voted against the six safeguards that are in front of you. We voted against those, 1914. Does that mean that we are actually now content, for example, that the planning powers be transferred to the Mayoral Development Corporation? Are we content now that the public assets be transferred to the Mayoral Development Corporation? Are we content that there won't be any public scrutiny of the Merrill Development Corporation's accounts and finances, because all laws are the opposite of that. So presumably if you voted against that, you vote for the opposite. And that causes me a huge amount of concern, and all the fine words about putting Hartlepool first seem to count for absolutely nothing when you consider those factors. Councillor Chair, in response to Councillor Body there, I'd just refer him to the recommendations in finance and policy uh, which answer those questions. A motion has been put and seconded, and I would ask that we go to the board. My understanding, Chair, is because it's a new motion, it's been seconded, we are allowed to debate it. Thank you, Chair. I just want to seek some clarity, really, uh, on the basis of some of the comments that were made while the voting on our <coughs> amendment went on. Um, 
completely acknowledge that we've currently got some safeguards that we're negotiating. I think it's also been made clear tonight the safeguards we propose went further than those safeguards. Just based on the comments of a couple of members uh, opposite, can I seek some clarity about how our safeguards would in any way, shape or form threatened the potential uh, start of the Mayoral Development Corporation given that we do have the power to stop it and therefore we'd have stopped the money or the investment? How is anything that has been proposed tonight threatened the money? Because I take the point that a couple, at least two or three members said they were worried about the money on our safeguards. I just want, there is no threat to the money, there's no threat to the MDC starting. We don't have the power, it's about negotiation. So I'd like to seek some clarity as to whether members opposite voted on the last proposal with the full facts. Would anything we propose tonight have, have affected the start of the MDC and that 10 million pounds that the TVCA have allocated to it? Yeah. One thing, anything. No. Thank you for the clarity. The money was never at stake. So those Can members I... who voted saying they were concerned about the money voted in error. Chair, can the I money clarify was not that? affected by the safeguards we proposed tonight, and it's been confirmed by the managing director, and I thank her for it. Councillor Muller. Chair, I believe, and, and I apologise, Denise, but I think that's incorrect. Has been, as was pointed out by Councillor Brash uh, during his cl uh, closing remarks, the Cheese Valley Mayor has made it very clear that he wants to go ahead with the creation of a mayoral development corporation with the uh, backing of Hartlepool Borough Council. What has been very clear within the statement that the Labour Party produced and has, has been articulated <coughs> this evening is that the members opposite would not like this to go ahead if those safeguards are not met. If those safeguards are not met, and given those safeguards would not potentially be met, <laughs> I'm a liar, please. Thank you. Councillor Brush. Councillor Brush. <laughs> not as yours. Thank you, Chair. As I, as I said, so the... Councillor Brush. Differences, some people haven't been caught. Um, as I was saying, Chair... As I was saying, Chair, what, is, what, what has been said is incorrect. People on this side of the, the uh, chamber have had all of the facts. Members of this side of the chamber have had lots of discussion on this. We had a, mem a briefing yesterday as well. And everybody on this side of the chamber who voted with us today did so of their own volition, and they did so based on the facts that they were and the answers that they received from their questions, Chair. Councillor Morley. Thank you, Chair. My apologies for being late today. I was stuck in traffic in my apologies for everyone in the chamber. Um, as you all know, um, I'm a solicitor and I've looked into this a great deal, um, as, yes, from a labour standpoint and also from the legalities. And I don't often speak at Roman Reform Council, but feel the need to speak today. I, with my fellow councillors and group of the sat in finance and policy and we've debated this, and not for one second do the Labour Party want to stop the money coming into Hartlepool. Yeah, yeah. That's not what this is about. If you look at the law in your papers, the Mayor and Development Corporation is actually quite simple. In the UK at the moment, we have legislation for about four development corporations. And if you also look, um, on the 26th of October 2019, the government undertook a consultation reform for development corporations because we have about four development corporations in the UK, but the Mayoral Development Corporation is quite narrow in the way it works, in the fact that the Mayor um, ha has an awful lot of power, putting it simply, a ridiculous amount of power. Now, the labour, the labour reforms that we put forward actually limit that mayoral power. But actually, under the legislation, I'm not sure whether you can or can't do it. But also, another point of interest that I asked the Chief Solicitor to look into is that there is a, in the Greater Manchester, the Mayor of Greater Manchester, who happens to be a Labour Mayor, He's put forward a joint initiative 
with Rochdale Council to form something called a mayoral development zone, um, which is a non-statutory body which incorporates the safeguards the Labour Party have put forward today. And actually, what he, he hasn't stopped the money. The mayor has the money, and that was never in question. But what was in question was the vehicle of the Mayoral Development Corporation. That's too narrow. With the greatest respect to Councillor Shane Moore as the leader, I did not vote for Shane to be leader, and that's no disrespect to Shane. But I would like to say who is on board with the Mayoral Development Corporation how everybody should have a say today, and they should. I do take issue with the fact that we are debating it today, and it wasn't brought to our full attention, as in we haven't had a proper debate. But I think you need to do your research with the greatest respect, and you need to all look into this, because the money was never a question. Because the Mayor of Greater Manchester is just formed a development zone where Everybody gets to choose who is on the board. So the money goes to the right places and democratically everybody is involved. So hopefully that will inform, and this is what people learned yesterday, um, sorry, on Monday, in the finance and policy. There are other vehicles that we can help that is democracy at play for the best of our people. And I am extremely disappointed that people today, fellow councillors, that, that listened to their conscience, but then didn't vote correctly. Um, and I, I am Councillor Morley. Councillor Morley, your time's up. Councillor Morley, your time's up. Sorry, just in relation to um, the comment um, that was raised at um, Finance and Policy Committee on Monday regarding the mayoral development zones, um, we have raised this with the combined authority and if I can just read out the response that we've received. Um, we've looked at the Manchester mayoral Devo development zone as requested. The mayoral development zone is a non-statutory entity with no statutory powers, unlike an MDC which is a statutory body. There is no legal standing for this body and it is effectively the Manchester Combined Authority using its existing powers but convening a mostly cross public sector board to agree investment in a particular zone. This is different from its Stockport MDC which is comparable to what we are proposing. There is no appetite from the Combined Authority to set up a non-statutory body, not least because decisions would still be reliant on the Combined Authority governance processes. The whole point of the MDC is to allow it to deliver a focused and streamlined decision-making structure. Councillor Sharp. Thank you, Chair. Um, essentially, I just want, I want to uh, bring something up for members to consider, okay? So, obviously, we are all here. We are all elected by the people of this town. We are all here. I am firmly of the belief that we are all here to do what's right for the town. We may disagree by policy. We may disagree by how it's achieved, but we agree on the end result. Now, my friends are here on this side of the chamber, we were all in the firm belief that this could work. It could work with these safeguards in place. It could bring something good to the town. However, could is doing a lot of work on this, okay? Anyone, uh, anyone who's been watching the football recently will know that anything could happen, you know, Argentina, Saudi Arabia is 2-1. So this could bring a lot of stuff into the town, however, it could also have the opposite effect and take lots of stuff away. It could take our power away, it could eventually take money away. We do not know. These safeguards we, we suggested were put in place simply you know, to give us that insurance, okay? It would be, it's, it's kind of akin to saying, I'm not gonna put a, front, a lock on my front door because I live in a nice area and no way I will get robbed in this, okay? So I just want members to consider one thing. Who are the public going to blame if this is wrong? Are they going to blame the Conservative Leveling Up Secretary, Michael Gove? Are they going to blame the Conservative Mayor, Ben Houchen? Or are they going to blame the colleagues in this chamber tonight who voted against this amendment? 
I did not want to make this political, however, I am firmly of the belief that every decision we make in this chamber has to be political. And when the leader of the council is coming up and saying that we are not supporting this corporation, uh, this mayoral development corporation, when we have suggested these safeguards in place to protect our town and our assets, I, I just cannot accept that those comments have been made, I'm afraid. And I, I just want, I just, like I say, I just want members to consider who the public are going to blame should this go wrong. Thank you, Thank Chair. You. Uh, members will have to apologise. I'm feeling a bit under the weather. Um, I think what's been called for today is, is democracy, and democracy is being played out. We've oh. we, we voted. we voted uh, as uh, members of Hardwell Borough Council, and that's happened. Uh, I think we need to... Uh, Close down that uh, debate and move to the vote. Thank you. Councillor Lillard. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. It's just on page 10 in the. I can't mess, I've got to put my glasses back on, sorry. They say it's going to be an audit and risk committee. Who is going to vote on that audit and risk Who's committee? Going to be on the Who audit? is going to be on it and are we going to be voted on that committee? It's the. That committee is the the MDC's committee. In the constitution, sorry, are you looking? Yeah. 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 It's the MDC that creates that committee. From the board. From the board of members. I, th I think we, do we don't know because um, we, we, it, it's a new body for us, so we don't know. So I um, think sorry. the legislation that gives the mayor the power gives him the power to create the committees, and that's one of them that is being proposed in his constitution. Can we go to the vote? So, um, just, just for clarity, um, so members, um, every, all members have got the finance and policy report in front of them, and the proposal was that the uh, recommendations in um, page nine of the covering report are agreed together with an uh, additional um, recommendation that in the constitution, in the draft constitu constitution, we put a clause in around public assets transferring back to the council ownership no when it disposes. So is that in relation to everything on finance and policy? These in Thank you. Is there any dissent from the floor? Right, there's no need to go to the vote, Chair. <laughs> now conclude the meeting.